Howdy, folks. This is Justro at Metcalf Mills bringing you Fun Fact Friday because this day and time, facts are hard to come by. I tell you what, you facts are getting as rare as hen's teeth, and that's the truth. Got a good one for you today. See that cane behind me, that sorghum cane? We're going to look at the cane mill and how it works. Hope you enjoy it. Just to give you a little update on us here, we're... We've all been sick, me and the girls. We're getting better. I've been doing a few things this week. I had the opportunity to go down to permapastures and help them a little bit, a little while the other day butchering chickens. If you ain't checked that video out, go check it out. Had a lot of fun, learned a lot. I really enjoyed it. It's really encouraging. Uh, raising meat birds is something that I've always been interested in, just ain't never done it. And I'm looking forward to adding that on here at some point just so we can have you know fresh chicken at hand when we need it because it's just getting more and more expensive in the stores i was really surprised at how pleasant it was of course i was working with a lot of experience so of course it's going to be pleasant when you're working in them conditions but i want to give a big thank you to permapastures farm renewed homestead ben and denise if you don't know them go check them out i had a lot of fun the other day and oh well don't let me forget this after we got done butchering the chickens of course a big meal was set at permapastures farm we had a great meal but the meal's not what i'm focused on we had this dessert and it was uh what we like to call creme brulee that's what me and billy calls it Michelle, the the OHH, what I call her, the original homestead honey, she makes this creme brulee, and it's just, man, it's off, like, like William says, it's off the hook. And I was thankful to get some of that the other day. It just put the icing on chicken butchering day. So thank you, Michelle, for all that. Thank you, everybody at Permapastures. Had a great time. But like I said, me and the girls are, we're almost better it's been a struggle there's a lot of that stuff going around in school right now and little charlotte she picks it up and carries it home so we're dealing with it wash your hands stay healthy try to do your best that's all we can do folks all right let's get on to this video now now this cane <clears throat> some of it gets pretty big you see how big that stalk is i mean that's big and it can be, you know, down a lot smaller. It just grows different sizes, different ones. But the way this works is inside this cane is the juice that has the sugar in it. So you got to extract that out of this before you can cook it. I feel really safe around here when I'm making Fun Fact Friday videos. And I'm going to show you why I feel so safe. Because this boy is always on the job. He's my guard dog. That's old bear. He's doing his job right now. He's guarding me. Ain't you bear? You my guard dog? Look at that, son. Anything makes a move or a noise, he'd be up and all over it. I guarantee it. It's my guard dog. Now, I cut a piece off of that big cane I showed you. Just cut a piece of the end off. There's what the inside of it looks like. Right there in that pulp, that's where all your juice is and your sugar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this down right here to try to show you, do a little experiment of how what happens when you crush and squeeze the sorghum cane. If I can get it just right here without knocking it off. All right gonna wedge me a board in here like that looks like it's gonna work let me get over here where you can see what i'm doing real good all right see that see if we can do a squeeze on it here can you see that phone ain't going to focus just right, but if you can see, see that puddle of 
juice that come out of that. Now there's not an overly abundance. There's not an overly abundance of juice here because see that because this stuff's been laying. You can let it lay. And what happens is this is the first year I've ever let any cane lay. When you let it lay out, the water in it will evaporate out and you'll be left with more just sugar juice, less water in it. So this stuff's been laying out for a pretty good while and it won't render as much juice but when you fill a pan up with the juice out of this cane it's been laying you'll have a lot bigger ratio of syrup as a finished product because you got less water in it to begin with i'm real excited about this it's a real game changer to let this stuff lay and be able to cook it you know at your convenience that's a huge that's a big deal i've always cut and cooked at the same time and it's kind of a big rush but this this Makes it a lot more pleasant doing it this way. Now this whole cane mill, I know it might look a little crude. It's got a little rust on the outside of it, but that ain't got nothing to do with it. When I clean this thing up, I scrub the inside real good with a stainless steel brush and pressure wash it out and just clean it to as clean as a pen. And then I run cane through there, break everything loose. It might be left from last year and then scrub it and wash it again. So it's really clean. You don't have to worry about anything except the rollers and the pan underneath it catches the juice. Nothing else touches it. So we clean it up real good every year before we use it. So on the cane mill, this particular cane mill is a Chattanooga number 44. It's a big cane mill. Horizontal cane mill. The rollers are horizontal instead of being vertical like most of the horse mills are. And what it's got, it's got a big roller on top right here, and it's got grooves in it. And what that does, it squeezes that juice and gives it a place to run out. So you want them grooves in there just like that. And on the bottom, you've got two rollers. See, there you go, right there. That's your bottom roller. It's your top roller right here. And what that does, when the drive pulley over here is turned, this gear right here turns the the drive gear, the reduction jack shaft that goes over to, I guess you'd call the master wheel here on the side of the cane mill, which gives you your big gear reduction to slow the speed down. So when you're driving this belt pulley, it's running this cane mill here pretty slow. See that? See how slow that's turning? And you just stick the cane in right here and it pulls it in between these. And then over here on the back side, you've got another roller, so it gets a double squeeze. It goes through the first two rollers. You see how close these are? They're real close together. They wasn't as close on the other side. It kind of crushes it on the other side, and then it finish squeezes it on this side. And the juice drains down into the pan under the bottom here. Yeah, I'll wash that out before we make another run. That's just pieces of cane, which gets strained out anyway. The juice runs down into the bottom catch pan and right out this drain right here on the bottom. And right out this drain right here on the bottom, which this is where we'll hook the pipe to, just like that and the pipe will run over here to our barrel where we'll filter it out but that's the kind of the mechanics of the cane mill and then you pummies over here the crushed cane stalks they just come out this side and fall down and you have to take a pitch for it and keep them piled back out of the way but that's how it works main drive pulley right here when it's turning all these gears we're working, driving the cane mill, which drives the, the squeezing rollers here. Now we'll fire this thing up and give you a good, 
experience of how it works. Now to drive this cane mill, we're going to use this drive belt right here. And what we're going to do, we're going to hook put the drive belt from our drive pulley on the back of our tractor and run it right over to the drive pulley on the cane mill. Right there. Unroll this thing right over here. Now we're going to very gently put it on our belt pulley right here, just like this. Like so. There we go. Now everything's running nice and true like it's supposed to be. Run our PTO on right here. do is keep some old cane laying around and I'll run that through to clean the cane mill out and to clean my rollers out. See that juice squeezing out of there? See all that juice? Close. You can see that juice sticking to these rollers. You see it? Them grooves. Well, well, that juice wants to stick to these grooves. If it gets in the grooves, there's more surface tension there than they are on the cane stalk. You can just see that juice just sticking to them rollers, pulling it right off. Flat as a flitter. What 
what you end up with here is a flat stalk of cane with all the juice been squeezed out of it. See there? That's how she works. You grind a few stalks of cane and it cleans them rollers up real nice because of all that pressure. This particular cane mill, like I said, it's a horizontal design. And you know how I am about horizontal things, like horizontal millstones. Well, I tend to like these horizontal cane mills too. They're made more for like a big time sugar cane operations, but they work good for sorghum too. You're doing the same thing, just squeezing the juice out of the cane. Now in the mountains here, pretty much everybody that I knowed had a horse drawn cane mill, <clears throat> which is the rollers stand up vertical. The main big roller has <coughs> has a, spin, a shaft that comes out the top with a collar that goes down on it that holds a sweep pole. A sweep pole bolts to that and runs out maybe 20 foot or so. And you got a horse that you hook onto the sweep pole or maybe 10 foot enough to get out of the way real good. 10 foot probably wouldn't be enough. I'd say 15 to 20 foot. But you hook a, the sweet pole to your horse or your mule and he walks in a circle and he turns that main drive on that cane mill. Now it's real slow grinding that way. Unless you got a big cane mill, you can put a lot of cane through it at once. But that's how all the old timers here in the mountains crushed their cane was in a pretty much a horse drone cane mill of that kind where their horse or mule just walks in a circle and they grind their cane i've heard stories my grandpa talking about grinding his cane with his mules you know or his horse and i remember one story he told me his brothers i think it was ralph and roy and him they got up early one morning and they ground a run of cane and they had it on cooking by daylight. So they got up real early. I may have told you this story already on the last video, but these old stories, I, I, I can't hear them too much. So, But yeah, they did. They, they got up early that morning, got their cane cooking by daylight. They're cooking their sorghum molasses by daylight. But anyway, that's, that's the cane mill. How it works, it just squeezes. I've got an old cane mill that I got on a trade one time, and it's just a two-roller mill. It's got a big wooden frame. The top is made out of a wooden beam. The bottom's a wooden beam. It's got two big rollers. And it was the same, a horse sweep mill, where the horse walked in a circle. But it was just a two-roller. It didn't have the three. And you can see the benefit of the three-roller cane mill here. You get that first crush that crushes the cane mill down and then that finishing uh, roller that really gets a lot of the juice out. So a two roller cane mill, it wouldn't get near a good a job on getting the juice out done as this three roller cane mill will do. But like I said, that old one I've got, it's real old. When they come out with the three roller cane mill, they called it improved. I'm pretty sure that's correct, improved. Three rollers, one, the first two are, I think it's like a, I want to say a quarter or eighth inch spacing, and then the last one's maybe a six, a eighth or a sixteenth. It may be a quarter and an eighth on the spacing. First roller breaks it and crushes it. A second roller finishes squeezing the juice out of it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's Fun Fact Friday. I figured it fit in since that's what we're working in here right now is cane. And I'm going to have a good cane video for you coming out real soon. I bet you're saying, yeah, I've heard that before, Justro. Well, it's coming, I promise. We're going to have a good one. We made one run. Got a couple more to make. It's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. Hit that like button if you will. Subscribe if you ain't already. Tell your friends about me. And if you're around close by, holler at me, and we'll see if we can't get you a jar of this sorghum. Thing about, I know people's going to be wanting it, but... The government's kind of funny about sending any farm products out of state. And it, it becomes a federal thing then. 
and I won't be able to do that. So if you was wanting to do to to me to try to ship you some, I can't do that out of state. So just wanted to let you know that. But if anybody's around close by, email me or something. I'd be glad to if you want a jar, let me know. This is Just Roll at Matt Calf Mills. I look forward to seeing you real soon.